So now that we've established the basic components that build up a protein, we can now actually talk about the polypeptide itself. And a polypeptide um, is simply the polymer because it's many peptides, many, many uh, amino acids linked together. So polypeptide consists usually of about 100 to 300 amino acids and they're usually found in a linear sequence. But that can change based off of the conformation. Conformation is another word for shape, and we'll talk about that right now. So a polypeptide is 100 to 300 amino acids. Let's just make sure we remember. These are all linked together via peptide bonds. Those peptide bonds formed from condensation reactions. Those condensation reactions involved amino acids. Amino acids have this structure, these characteristics, dependent on what? The R group. So the R groups are going to be very important, especially when we start building actual proteins. So let's do that. Let's look at protein structure as a whole. Protein structure. Now that we understand what polypeptides are, what peptides are, what amino acids are, we can finally understand proteins. Proteins have four basic structures. The first structure that you want to know is known as primary structure. And what I just did here was the uh, sort of shorthand for primary. Primary shorthand is written as one with like a degree sign right here. This stands for primary. Primary structure is the basic structure of a protein, and this is going to be, just like I mentioned earlier in our polypeptide section, a linear amino acid sequence. Nothing crazy going on here, just a bunch of amino acids linked in a line like this, just a, 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 a bunch of amino acids linked together in a line. When, we, when things get more interesting are when we start looking at something like the secondary structure. The secondary structure is little more complex because it's of course secondary so two little degree sign gives us a secondary structure in this situation what starts happening is that we start having hydrogen bonds hydrogen bonds are found within these amino acid monomers all over the place the hydrogen bonds are actually now going to be what are known as at regular intervals what does that mean what is that what's the consequence of that this is going to actually cause structural changes. And all you need to know about that is the fact that now that we have a secondary structure, we have two different types of structures that can form in our basic protein. Our protein can now, because of these structural changes, because we start seeing H bonds interacting with each other, in the secondary structure, we get two different things. We get either an alpha, Remember the Greek letter alpha, an alpha helix, or what is known as a beta pleated sheet. Two different secondary structures that you must know that are caused because of hydrogen bond interactions. These are caused because of hydrogen bond interactions. Basic difference between these is that the alpha helix is a little more flexible. It's a flexible structure. The beta pleated sheet is strong, but not as flexible. So we'll say not flexible. And uh, sort of an easy way to remember what they look like. I can't really draw it here, um, but I'll do it very quickly here. The alpha helix will look sort of something like this. See, it's nice and flexible. It's able to uh, it sort of looks elastic. Beta pleated sheet will usually be represented by something like this. A little more structured, a little stronger, non-flexible. So those are our two types of secondary structures. The next one, obviously, is going to be what? Our, now this is not called third structure, but it's called tertiary structure. Tertiary structure. We're getting more and more complex. We're building a more complex protein as we move on in the structure. This tertiary structure now doesn't um, just involve hydrogen bonding. What happens now is that we not only have linear amino acid sequence, we not only have hydrogen bonding interacting with each other, we now have R group interactions. Let's write that down. R group interactions. And this is happening within, I'll say with, in one polypeptide. 
Because remember, a polypeptide is 100 to 300 amino acids. These 100 to 300 amino acids are going to be formed in a linear sequence. And if we have tertiary structure, that means we must have secondary structure. If we have secondary structure, that means the amino acids that are in this chain of polypeptides are either going to be in an alpha helix or beta pleated sheet. But once we have tertiary structure, each amino acid has, remember, an R group, something that makes it the amino acid that it is this varying side chain. Once the R groups start interacting, once the H bonds start interacting, once the linear sequence is established and changed into these uh, alpha helix or beta pleated sheet, now we have tertiary structure. Now we have finally what is known as 3D shape. Easy way to remember tertiary structure. What happens in tertiary structure? We get 3, right? 3. Now we get 3D shape. Many scientists, many people might also say that this is the point in which we have protein functionality. What does that mean? That means that usually a protein, like let's say a hormone, let's say something like a, a phospholipid bilayer protein, something that is going to have a function, gains its function once it gets to not the primary structure, not the secondary structure, but usually at the tertiary structure, the protein is able to do the job that it was born to do. The last thing that we'll talk about is the last structure, which is our quaternary structure. So we'll write quaternary structure here. What happens in this situation? This time, instead of having, look what we wrote here, one polypeptide, our group interactions within one polypeptide, we actually have several polypeptides interacting with each other several polypeps interacting with each other. A good example of this is a hemoglobin molecule. I highly suggest looking up its structure. You will notice that it actually has four polypeptide PPCs, polypeptide chains. Four polypeptide chains all wrapped up um, against each other um, and interacting in various ways. Uh, you can think of it as sort of, it sort of looks like this. There's one, two, three, four. Notice how I have one structure right here that's a 3D shape. That's a tertiary structure. This is another polypeptide, another one, another one. This whole thing sort of represents a very simple hemoglobin molecule. And the absolute last thing we want to talk about in terms of protein structure is the idea of denaturation. This is a very good biological term that you must know. Denaturation is simply the loss of structure or the loss of conformation. Confirmation. Confirmation is just another word for shape or structure. Denaturation happens in our bodies. Things cause denaturation to occur. It's when proteins break down. They go from the quaternary structure back to the tertiary, back to the secondary, back to the primary, back to their basic amino acid forms. This usually occurs based on chemistry, chemical reactions. Maybe even temperature can change it. pH, salt concentration. Various things cause denaturation to happen. It's just good to know that this is the term that we use when we want to take a protein and break it down, make it lose its very fancy quaternary or tertiary structure. So overall, these are our proteins. They are polymers because they are the combination of many single amino acid subunits linked together via peptide bonds, which are made via condensation reactions. Amino acids are specific because they have different R groups. And we learned today in this video that protein structure can be primary, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary with increasing level of complexity based on what's interacting with what. And lastly, we can denature proteins. We can break them down, put them back into their basic forms.